The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We've got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets slightly in the red to kick things off. S&Ps were negative by about two-tenths percent. That's 12 points in the red, trading at 57.79. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by about two-tenths percent as well. 45 points in the red, 20,175. Dow, right there, two-tenths percent in the red right now, 82 points off at 42,574. And the Russell, six-tenths percent in the red, 2,231 right now for the Russell. We got Bitcoin down about $2,000. You could call it 3000 from where we were on Friday's high of 67135 We're trading at 64275 Crude, 6807 Just kind of hanging out in the $68 region that we've been at since you accelerated lower on Thursday. You jump over to gold. Gold pulling back a bit. We got gold at about $26.61. You're negative by $6 on the session right now. We jump over to notes and bonds. Little volatility. And we got lower price, higher yield right now. And you're talking about a yield right now on the 10-year of 3.79%. 3.79. We take a look at the daily on that 10-year. And yeah, pulling back a bit. Pretty remarkable. You got the spike high September 11th. It's September 30th. It is the last trading day of September. Tomorrow, October 1st, and you jump over to the dollar index. DXY. 143. We were as low as almost 100 on Friday. You put things on a 15 minute. We spiked to 100.15, and we're almost right at those levels early. We're catching a little bit of strength right now to 100.42 in that dollar index. What else we got? What are we talking about? How about the port strike? That was what I was reading about this morning. Port strike imminent. Biden says he's not going to do anything. And yeah, Tampa's got a port man. Ports up and down. The East Coast all over the place. The International Longshoremen's Association signaled in a post over the weekend that it will strike at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday, October 1st. Time is not on the side of importers. And it seems like scheduled talks are not even happening right now. You're talking about 14 ports. Yeah, and it is a big one, man. The approximate value of the freight, $2.7 billion is what we're talking about arriving. Based on the data, the digital receipts of cargo containers, 54,000 20-foot equivalent arrived Friday at the 14 ports. Yeah, pretty remarkable, right? What happens to even those, let alone what will happen to the slowdown? Now, what's intriguing is Biden says he's not going to do anything and get involved here. But I imagine if this goes on, that, that that may not be the case, because it seems pretty critical, to put it lightly. Yeah, look at the companies that are exposed to it, of course. You know, the usual suspects, as you may expect. Walmart, Home Depot, Bob's Discount Furniture, Ikea, Amazon up there as well. Whew. Yeah, so we're going to play and see. We're going to see that one play out, man. Keep our eye on it. Because it happens at midnight tonight. We got a vice presidential debate tomorrow. I'm sure they'll have something to talk about with this, but we'll see where we go. But nonetheless, that is looming, and we are here, and it happens at midnight. Yeah, they're urging the parties to come together, but if Biden's not going to do anything, that's basically the bottom line. That's as far as it goes. All right, we jump around to what other news stories we got. How about this one? Direct TV and Ditch to Dish to merge to create the largest US pay TV provider. Direct TV is going to assume almost ten billion dollars of Dish debt. Yeah, it's quite a price tag. Um, nominal consideration of one dollar, one dollar plus ten billion dollars in debt. Pretty remarkable. Under the terms, Direct TV is going to acquire Dish from Echo Star Corp for a dollar plus all that debt. The deal is contingent upon Dish's bondholders agreeing to take a haircut on the principal amount of the company's debt. And they've mer they've been flirting with this one for a while. 
but yeah, I'd say they got plenty of competition. I find myself, <coughs> excuse me, regularly right now asking, because I got a lot of streaming platforms. Uh, you got Disney getting a little bit of an upgrade, speaking of today, right? Where was this one? I saw one of them out here, I think. Yeah, who gets a little bit of an upgrade? Who gave them a... Forgive me, but yeah, we do have a little bit. They got some kind of upgrade. A buy from a neutral Seaport Global. So I'm seeing one 6.15 a.m. this morning. Nonetheless, you get Disney a little bit higher. We jump over to Netflix shares. Not bad. We were at 7.28, but still above 7.05. We jump over to Warner Brothers Discovery right now. One of the more intriguing deals. You're at 6.64. You're at 8.38. Quite the pop from where we were. Just even three weeks ago, you take a look at the weekly, though, and, man, it's been a tough one. But, yeah, what's going to happen to the landscape, right? As in, you know, you look at something like DirecTV and Dish, and very difficult to argue that that would be anti-competitive when there are so many options. Now, just even for the NFL, I find myself... I have Paramount. I can watch CBS. I can watch some of the games. I don't have regular TV. I have... Amazon Prime, I can watch Thursday Night Football. I have Peacock, I can watch Sunday Night Football. I have ESPN Plus as part of my bundle with Disney, Hulu, ESPN Plus. That allows me to watch some college football. That allowed me to watch that Georgia-Alabama game on Saturday night, which was amazing. And then it allows you to watch some Monday Night Football, too. Now, ESPN Plus, ESPN, different entities, but they are airing a lot on ESPN Plus as well, as evidenced by Georgia, Alabama. I mean, the game of the week, man, Saturday night on ESPN Plus. But, yeah, so I find myself saying, okay, Disney, we probably need for Tommy. Not sure we need Hulu on ESPN. I like having that coming into football season. Things are going to change after football. That's why I was okay having NBC. That's why I'm okay having Paramount as well. But you talk about it right now. In my household, you got Amazon Prime. We haven't even talked about Netflix yet, which we have, of course. Amazon, Netflix, Paramount, Peacock, Max. It's too many streaming services, folks. Um, Netflix is probably not going away. Disney, I cannot cancel that one with Tommy and kids in the house. What's interesting is Paramount, they got a bunch of Paw Patrol. They have a bunch. I know I'm spending the first segue on streaming, but why not, man, when you got a deal like that with Dish and DirecTV? Um, you're going to see these streaming companies, really. And then on top of that, I still pay for Sirius XM radio. So I got too much too much content for what we're using in the household. And you're probably going to start to see those getting trimmed a little bit, and you got a little bit of a merger going on today. But markets, man, markets are on fire right now. We jump over... The euro, excuse me, U.S. dollar, check in on some currencies as we kick off the trading week. Yeah, and a little bit of volatility over there. So jumping over the story we got going on, German inflation drops to 1.8% in September below expectations. So where, where it gets really intriguing on our front is you have the Fed cutting. You now have German inflation dropping to below 2%. Okay. What is that going to do? That's going to cause them to potentially cut at a more drastic rate. They've already cut twice. But yeah, you're talking about 1.8% over there. Well, what's that going to do to our dollar? We'll take a look at some of the currencies. We'll take a look at some of the commodities. Monday trading. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider funds' investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps off by 11 points right now. NASDAQ 100 slightly in the red, as we mentioned, talking about the Euro-US dollar. So you have German inflation coming in lighter than expected on a longer-term basis. Just wanted to finish up that conversation we had from the break. You know, you talk about the dollar, okay? I was talking about this, I believe, on Friday's show. You take a look at the dollar. If you weren't listening to Friday's program, okay, what I was talking about was the dollar right now is 100.34, you were as low as 100.82 in January of 2023. You take a look at where the gold contract was at that time. And yeah, you're talking about about 2000, right? And the point being is that you've had the dollar with extreme volatility over that period of time, but you were basically right where you were at that period of time. You have gold trading up $700 almost, $600 to $700 at the same level where the dollar is. Now, what's going to be intriguing is what happens to the dollar as the Fed begins their cutting cycle. Okay, they've already begun with 50. We'll see where they go from here, but the market has an extreme amount of cuts. You fast forward out to June of next year, which is six meetings, okay? All right, I better find out and make sure. See me fit. I believe it is. We'll pull it up right now. June of next year, which is six meetings from right now. Okay, they meet about every six weeks. So about nine weeks out. Yeah, it is. So here's the CME Fed Watch tool that I put up occasionally. All right, next meeting is November 7th. Then they go December, January, March, May, and June. So June 18th gets us six meetings out into the future. And if you talk about where we are, where the market's pricing us right now, 
it's putting us in the range of about three to three and a quarter percent, which would be seven 25 basis point cuts over the next six meetings. So you're either talking about 25 at every meeting or 50 somewhere and 25 for the rest or 50, 50 and a zero in there. But nonetheless, you get the point. The market is pricing it at least 25 basis points of cuts each meeting for the next six meetings and going forward from there. You go to July, okay? And you can see the reason why I go to June is because July still has the same level. You're still pricing in 1.75 of cuts for where we are in July. You go to September, what's the biggest area? Still the 3 to 3.25 range, okay? So the reason why I pick that June meeting is because that June meeting is the, is the lowest range where you have the highest probability for that 3 to 3 and a quarter. You can see that in May... The market's really pricing in will be at about 1.5 percentage points of cuts over the next five meetings. By June, that area reaches three to three and a quarter. And I don't think it gets higher than that until, no, see, even by October, the target range is still. So point being, they expect acceleration through June. You're looking for nine months of an accelerating cutting schedule priced into this market. Then maybe we can calm down a bit. Because the logic goes, right, we're very restrictive right now. 4.75% is very restrictive. There's no way the R star, the natural great rate of growth in this economy is approaching 5%. It's not happening. We're too developed of an economy right now. Where we are, we're growing rapidly, but GDP is not growing at 5%, right? So the Fed rate, overnight lending rate, is almost 5%. You bring that back down to 3%, that's probably in the range, right? Where you're not too restrictive, you're not too accommodating, you're right in the middle, you're the Goldilocks scenario. What's intriguing for the dollar, though, is what's happening in Europe and overseas, etc. Because you could make the case that as we're going to begin cutting rates, our yields are going to come down, and if our yields come down, the dollar will weaken, Right? Where that becomes a problem is when you start getting numbers like the German inflation number from today. Did I close it out? Maybe I did. Well, it came in at 1.8%. We saw the number, right? I might have jumped around. And what that could cause Europe to do is that could cause Europe to cut an extreme level in the same way. Our rates compared to Europe rates, Europe's rates would actually be perceived as a little bit better. And if our rates versus the comparative rates that people have access to around the globe, what could happen is people say, hey, you know what? Yeah, they're cutting, but Europe's cutting too. We're going to keep our money in U.S. bonds. We're going to need those dollars. So just be a little bit careful here with the dollar at these levels. But you break below this, you break below it decisively, we're probably on our way to 90. Critical area, man, as the dollar come down here, testing again at that 100 area. And right now we're up by 24 pennies. But yeah, you start seeing those inflation numbers in Europe. You start seeing Europe cutting dramatically. The dollar doesn't necessarily have to plummet from here if our cuts, even though aggressive, are just going to be the same with Europe to a certain degree. We'll find out, right? All right, what else have we got going on in this market? Yeah, China. We got to check out China, man. How about the Chinese stocks? Is they are trading higher yet again? You jump over to the headline. And yeah, you're talking about a stimulus rally. Rally. Let me pull it up in terms of where we are. But you got another pop going on. You jump over to Alibaba. Now that's a weekly. But how about it? You got gaps every single day almost, right? You back it up to last Monday. We're at 88 bucks. You gap higher. Gap lower. Gap higher. Trade higher. Gap higher yet again. Alibaba is going to be up $4 in the pre-market right now. You jump over to Asia. And you got the Hang Seng up by 2.4%. Shanghai, how about 8% in the positive for the Shanghai? Yeah. What's interesting is you get the Nikkei down 4.8%. So what's going on over there, right? Man, so you check out some of the headlines. Yeah, 
Alibaba, they're trading higher. Pinduoduo, trading higher to 141.25 as well as China. Going to get another lift at the open. Um, already, already trading higher. All right, our market's going to be interesting. Looking a little toppy here. September 19th, that huge acceleration up to 57.97. You know, I don't have to show you a master technician, a ma master chartist to show a little bit of rolling over up here on a daily basis. That's your S&P. You check out the NASDAQ 100. You get that spike high. September 26th, we've rolled over for a couple days. We'll see if we can hold on to the momentum here. And we check out the gold contract. It's quite an acceleration up to 2,700. You're sitting at 2,000 in the middle of February. And we're trading right now at 2661. And we check out the dollar index as we come into the opening bell. Yeah, keep your eye on that dollar, man. 100, critical area. You back it up on a weekly basis. You're talking about the lows of July of last year. We're trading right now at 100.40. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. Final trading day of September. We'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. you got the markets barely in the red. s and is off by 10 points right now, trading at 57.81. NASDAQ 100, barely in the bed, red by about two-tenths percent right now. Bitcoin, down about $1,900. You jump around. 
to some of the big dogs. And how about Apple, man? Apple up by 1.4%, getting a little bit of an acceleration, to put it lightly. You're up by more than $3 right now in a negative environment. And what do we got going with Apple, man? There's always something going on with Apple, right? Yeah, nonetheless, they're catching a bid. Up by percentage and a half. Remarkable with the NASDAQ 100 trading low. We jump around to some of the other equities. Microsoft, negative by four-tenths percent. We jump over to Amazon shares, negative by a bit. Off by four-tenths percent as well. Jump over to Google shares. Yeah, slightly in the red by a tenth of percent. NVIDIA shares this morning down by 2% to 118.94 after trading to 127 just last Thursday for NVIDIA shares. Jump over to AMD. They're slightly negative. Intel holding up relatively well at near $24, 23.86 for Intel shares. All right, jumping back to the Japan and China story. Interesting, yeah, Japan... crashing to put it lightly right off almost five percent for the nikkei meanwhile you get the hang sang up eight percent quite a divergence but nonetheless what you have going on in japan is you have number one a new prime minister and number two you got some hot retail sales man japan august retail sales climbing 2.8 percent year over year market was looking for 2.3 up from a revised 2.7 in july and then you have Shigeru Ishiba beating economic security minister Sanai Takaichi in the final round of the Liberal Democratic Party election on Friday. You had volatility in the end on that action. There's your yen action. Okay. And what this has to do with is so you have markets digesting the currency action that occurred on Friday, digesting the news of Friday. But what it has to do with? It has to do with cuts. Kind of the same rule. And this is the reason why I spent that time going over Germany. Excuse me. It has to do with hikes. Listen to me, right? That's the amazing part of everything going on here. With the election of the incoming prime minister, Shigeru Ishiba, that means, this is their quote, okay, but the Bank of Japan will not face any political hurdle for hiking rates further. Economist at Global Market, Treasury Department, a higher interest rate, yeah, strengthens the yen. So the expectation is they're going to have some clearance here to hike. The market pulls back. There's your 15-minute. If they hike, they're going to have higher interest rates. Higher interest rates are going to cause the yen to strengthen. And a lower number on this chart is a strengthening of the yen. And the way you want to read currency pairs, folks, okay, is imagine you put a 1 in front of the first currency of the pair. So, for instance, this one, the U.S. dollar yen, you have one U.S. dollar equals how many yen? Okay, so how many yen do I have to pay to buy one U.S. dollar? Well, when the yen is weak, you got to pay a lot of yen for that same U.S. dollar because you're paying in a weak currency, right? So when the yen was up to 162, you had to pay 162 yen for one dollar. Or if I gave you one dollar, how many yen are you going to give me back? I'm going to give you 162. That's such a strong dollar. Okay. But today you give me that same dollar. I'm only giving you 142 yen. So when this number goes down, the yen is strengthening. And so what we have is we have, and I know a lot. People know that, but sometimes, you know, when you're really getting used to following currencies and the move, uh, it's important just to go over for those catching up and just, just, just digging into it. And listen, this stuff takes a lot of time for your head to wrap your brain around, right? Because you go the other way. First, you have the U.S. dollar yen pairing, but then how do they quote the euro U.S. dollar? They quote it the other way, right? They quote it the other way, which is one euro gets you how many U.S. dollars, et cetera. So now, our U.S. dollar is the second in the pairing, et cetera, right? So it's almost vice versa. But nonetheless, you have Japan. They are down dramatically, man, with the Nikkei off by 5%. You get the Hang Seng right now up dramatically. And we got our markets recoiling. I'm sure Apple is helping out with the NASDAQ 100 getting into the green right now. Apple shares up by 1.8% to 232. What are we talking about here? Yeah, we're right near all-time highs for Apple. 237 is the all-time high. You jump over to the Analyze tab, you are now talking about a company that is in excess of $3.5 trillion. Remarkable, man. 
look at this. Microsoft gets into the green. You can't hold these these markets down. I kid, half so. But let's check around. Amazon catches a little bit of a bit of the open right now. Does Google get in on the action? They sure do. And NVIDIA a slight bit as well. We check in Tesla shares. Tesla trading up by three-tenths percent right now. All right. Whew. Yeah, and Helene. Man, the visuals just keep coming. Whether it's, you know, Florida is, not to say bad enough, but boy, there is just so much destruction, man. Madeira Beach, St. Pete Beach, keeping everybody in my thoughts because just destruction, a lot of sadness, a lot of rebuilding necessary. We'll see if they're going to rebuild in certain areas, man, because it seems like certain areas just keep getting clobbered, especially by the beach. Maybe you just got to rebuild it in a different way, right? Put those houses on stilts, et cetera, to a certain degree, because I think this is just going to keep happening on a more regular basis. Boy, those storm surges. You're even seeing the Carolinas. Um, many areas up the East Coast really getting clobbered. And now we got another one that might be out there as well. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's see what else we got pulled up here. Yeah, this is an interesting one, talking about cars, right? Stellantis and Austin Martin. Well, pay attention to Stellantis when they're talking about Jeep. Their share is dropping after a profit warning amid China woes. But, yeah, you're talking about Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and good old Maserati. Got to love those Maseratis, man. I watched the movie Ferrari recently, which was actually pretty interesting. Um, warned of, with Adam Driver. It was a good one. Warned of lower than expected sales across most regions. That's what I want to get to for the second half. Yeah, adjusted operating income margins between 5.5 to 7, down from a double-digit outlook. That's quite a shave, man. You're talking about telling everybody that margins are going to be 10% plus, and now they're going to be maybe 5.5%. It's a big hit. Deterioration in the global industry backdrop reflects a lower 2024 market forecast than at the beginning of the period, while competitive dynamics have intensified due to both rising industry supply as well as increased Chinese competition. Yeah. Austin Martin. So they got cuts in its profit margin in production, and they're going to um, a 1,000 unit reduction. They're going to make 1,000 less cars because of the decreased demand. Whew, how about it, man? Down 23%. Whew. What's going on with the car companies today? Yeah, there you go. I was like, Ford, probably feeling blessed to be only down by 2% today when you got a company like Stellantis down by 23%. My goodness. Toyota Motors down by 2.2% right now. NASDAQ, though, we're in the positive. Apple driving the markets higher, up by 1.9%. We'll take a look at the heat map. We'll see what's moving this market when we get back, folks. Still got a lot to go over. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. 
Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So there is a chart of Stellantis down by 13%, man. And you talk about about trimming the margins Woo. you got to pay attention to these charts man never think it's too late to get out of dodge you know you see this thing falling you're saying yo maybe i'll just wait until we get a little bit of a bounce no bounce whatsoever as you go from 29.51 and you are now cut in half at 14.04 you're challenging the lows and you're probably coming down to these lows man you're probably coming down to 12 dollars Right? How do you make this dive? How do you restate things in terms of where we are? You just came out th with the numbers that were abysmal, and now you're saying things are even more dire. We're down by 13% for Stellantis, and yeah, Ford, GM, look at GM's down 3% now, Toyota down by 2.3%, so Apple shares, though, you talk about it, man, up by 1.8%, so Apple... Just trying to dig a little bit around. One thing that did happen is that on Friday after the close, you had the journal come out and report that Apple is no longer in talks to participate in an open AI funding round to raise as much as $6.5 billion. They recently fell out of the talks to join the round, which is slated to close next week. Not sure if they're talking about this week or next week since the story is out Friday, but nonetheless, so maybe popping on that news that's quite a pop you talk about apple you're talking about a four dollar pop for a company that has 15 billion shares that's a 60 billion dollar pop of four dollars it is intriguing that everybody wants in on the action on open ai i guess not quite apple just yet but that would be interesting to see how microsoft is in there as such a huge player in apple and maybe that's part of the reason that apple is not I mentioned Disney. They give back a little bit of those gains. They got a little bit of an upgrade, but yeah, they trade lower. 96.12 on the open after spiking to 97.57. We jump to some retail stock stocks. You got Walmart shares up by three tenths percent right now. Target up by about two tenths percent right now. You take a look at Target shares. Yeah, let's go a little bit even bigger picture. Let's take that one off. Yeah, building a base at this 150 area, which is where you crash down on volume in May of 2022, right? Pretty remarkable. The low there of 145, you did dip below it towards the end of 2023, but that's the base. We're trying to build it. You're sitting right now at 155, barely in the positive for target shares. All right, getting back to that port discussion. So 45,000 dock workers from Maine to Texas 77% pay increases what they're pushing for. Good for them. The reason why I highlight it is because where 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 is the other side, right? How close are they or how far are they 
apart from making a deal here potentially. But yeah, I mean, you have the likes Walmart, Target, Caterpillar, GM, all those companies. JP Morgan, they say that every single day that port strike could cost the U.S. economy about $4 billion every single day. 10 days, $40 billion is what it could cost the economy. Remarkable. The White House, that's GDP. That's our thats our economy. That's our economic engine. The White House has declined to intervene so far, as I mentioned. This can only go so far, and then I imagine they would step in because it has the potential to be pretty bad. In the first seven months of the year, the ports handled 74% of the country's seaborne wine. Yeah. How about bananas? I love bananas. I'm always talking about, actually, bananas. Fruit's pretty expensive. Very healthy for you, but fruit's pretty expensive. Bananas are so cheap comparatively. Bananas, folks, super healthy. Don't ever think that, you know, you hear sometimes people say bananas, they get a lot of sugar, right? They, bananas are so healthy, man. They're so cheap. But 75%, 89% of the salt. Now, the ports of New York and New Jersey, the third busiest, busiest container seaport in the country, 420,000. You like that number, Elon? Containers in July, Right? It's just may amazing the staggering impact that this could have, man. So you're going to start hearing a lot more about it, especially when, what are we doing? We're coming out of inflational, uh, a generational inflation spike. That's not going to help things, folks. But yeah, I just want to go over some of those numbers because you're talking about, that's just the port of New York and New Jersey in one month. 420,000 containers. Those goods don't make it. There is going to be a reset in terms of pricing, et cetera. We'll see what happens. Um, but that's scheduled to come down the line at midnight tonight, and you will hear more about it. And, yeah, you know, we got a port here in Tampa, so it's everywhere. It's not just New York. It's just not just New Jersey. 14 points, ports with 45,000 dock workers from Maine to Texas. Whew. All right. Let's see. We talked about Stellantis. What else we got going on right now? Yeah, that's an interesting one from the journal, but we won't get into that. That's a little bit of politics. Yeah, this one's interesting from J.P. Morgan. I was reading about the this morning. It's out last week from September 27th, but <coughs> J.P. Morgan prepared to sue the U.S. government over the Zelle scams. And in the, form of, in the world of digital payments, and so much is digital now, right? J.P. Morgan disclosed to the CFPB that could punish the lender for its role in Zelle, okay? The bank is going to sue its regulator. And yeah, that would have been unheard of. But that's what they're going to try and do. Um, could punish J.P. Morgan for its role. The bank is accused of failing to kick criminal accounts off its platform and failing to compensate some scam victims. You're going to see a lot more about this because I know some people in my life love it. Some people in my life still operate via checks and debit cards, etc. But this is where things are going. And, you know, I get right now, I have a duplex in Tampa. One person pays me via Zelle and the other person play, pays me via Venmo. And, and checks are basically a thing of the past um, to come. And what is going to have to, to harp on this article, though, people are going to have to be protected with these banks because, yeah, it is hell in terms of getting back. We got our account hacked one time years back. If you've been listening long enough, you've heard the stories. And so we got our Wells Fargo account hacked, right? This is, this is a good one. Just to show you, and now this is, you know, imagine single mother, single father, doesn't have the time to fight with their bank, working every day, picking up the kids, doesn't have the time to battle. This was our business account at TFNN. We had a banking relationship for probably 10 or 20 years. This is 10 years ago or so. Wells Fargo gets hacked. Even better than it getting hacked is that what seemed to happen is that maybe checks got stolen out of the office and checks got used. So maybe it was the cleaning crew or something like that. But checks literally almost got stolen out of our office is what we thought had happened. And... What did they do? They were paying for like cable bills and stuff like that. And the Wells Fargo would 
do nothing for us until my dad got them down there and raised hell and said, you know, we're, we're going to like, you're going to be on the news, all this stuff. They gave us back the money. They, those people are getting in trouble, right? Those banks do very little. You're seeing, that's what you're seeing play out here with JP Morgan. So this is going to come to the forefront as digital payments become the norm versus checks. JP Morgan down by 1.2%. One more segment, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. S&P is negative by just four points right now. NASDAQ positive by 26. We'll take a look at Tesla for one of our Tigers in the Tigers Den on YouTube there. And um, the question is, maybe Tesla trading higher? I don't know if that's going to be the case, Jambalaya. Um, and I'm biased, you know, with my own perspective. But, boy... One thing you want to look at is this a critical area, right? You just take a look at the chart. We're right back to where we were December last year. You had a high there of 265, the high in July of 271, and we're right back to 264, right back in the beginning of the year. You take a look at this thing on a monthly, okay? The one thing is this is the last trading day of the month, right? You got up to this level prior in July and then dipped lower on almost, what is that, 3 billion shares that month? What did we just do in September? 1.5 billion. Now that was an earnings extravaganza, okay? But you just did 1.5 billion shares. 
you tell you what is the low? Two point five billion. What was the month where you actually got a, up to the price point we're at right now? Two point nine billion. Um, and just on a longer term perspective, man, just big picture fundamental perspective, you're talking about a company valued at eight hundred and fifty billion dollars. I don't think I would want to be holding this equity, my own perspective, but you're asking for it. When you talk about the risk-reward relationship with a company that's valued at $850 billion, uh, and they're going to be coming out with their self-driving Uber taxi fleet news, I think this is going to be one of those stories of buying the room or selling the news because there's a lot of expectations to live up to for a company valued at $850 billion when that value is built justifiably or not, you make the case, all right? Elon, he is a dynamic figure that has changed the world for the better in many ways, driving EVs. But boy, that EV market's in trouble right now, and Tesla is part of it, indeed. All right. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. I see him in the Tiger's Den getting ready. We got live programming after that. S&P's off by five points. NASDAQ 100 positive. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Have a great Monday. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for Basil. Have a great one, folks.